Hello, uh, we're looking at a specimen of a brain here. These are the cerebral hemispheres and we're looking at it from the top. And as I turn it around, you can see the side view and here we're looking at it from the bottom. Just to orientate you, these are the temporal lobes, this is the pons and that is the medulla and of course these are the cerebellar hemispheres. So the pathology is actually most obviously visible uh, looking at the cerebral hemispheres. We can see that this whole area looks a little bit milky compared to here. So I'm going to zoom in. This is what the normal coverings of the brain should look like. So what coverings are we looking at? We are first looking at the arachnoid meter. And this is transparent normally, like a film of cling wrap. And just below that is the peer meter. However, if you look at this area, you can see that there's this pale tan exudate within the subarachnoid space that is between the arachnoid and peer meter. And all these are areas of exudate. It's also present uh, in the right cerebral hemisphere. And we can see some areas where there is no exudate visible, but we can actually see the surface of the brain, the cortex, and other areas where there is exudate. So this exudate is composed of lots and lots of neutrophils, as well as perhaps some bacteria and uh, some dead cells. And this is a fibrinopyrulent exudate. Sometimes there's fibrin as well. And this is a classical appearance of bacterial meningitis or parulent meningitis. Diagnosis would be by examining the CSF, the cerebral spinal fluid, by doing a lumbar puncture and we would expect to see many, many neutrophils within the CSF. For example, this is a histologic section showing the CSF and this in the subarachnoid space. We can see lots of neutrophils here. And we may occasionally be lucky enough to be able to see the causative organisms. In this case, it is Neisseria meningitidis, which is an intracellular uh, gram-negative diplococcus. Uh, grossly, this is a fresher example where you can see this kind of milky, yellowish, greenish fibrinopyrulent exudate within the subarachnoid space. So the diagnosis here is parulent meningitis, and this is usually caused by bacterial infection.